Hello, um, I'm delighted to have uh, Theo Goff with us, a Unifield College student. In fact, before the camera has gone on, we've just been having a conversation about bench pressing 171 kilos and thinks he might be able to do that once his, uh, his pec doesn't tear again. So they're the kind of conversations you're having with someone who's training at that level. But I remember Theo in year seven and he just was really keen to get involved in the gym and we were doing health rated fitness sessions and other children were gravitating towards the cross trainers and the rowers and the, and the bikes. Theo was slowly edging towards the weights and I was kind of going, well, not sure yet, you can do a little bit, we do a little bit of work, but his desire to just kind of work out and get stronger was just, you know, immense. And, and from that age on, he started training. And we're sitting here now, but he's just talking about his journey and I suppose how well you've done. I mean, currently we're third in the world, first in the country for 83 kilo weight class. Yeah, so just, I mean, I would love to know a little bit more about your journey and how it started and how you got to from, you know, that point to this point, really. So when I was about 11 or 12, my older brother started um, weight training, going to the gym. Uh, you were working with Hedge Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I sort of basically just followed in with them. And then slowly over time, I found I really enjoyed just getting stronger. I said exactly how much I could lift. And getting stronger than them probably quickly. That was the initial, <laughs> yeah, the initial goal was just to get stronger than them. Uh, and then one day, just working out with my brothers, he looked at the current break, break records and noticed that I was already lifting more than one of them. So I from there, contacted a powerlifting coach, uh, got started and then committed, and then we picked up from that. And in terms of your kind of training regime, I mean, what are you talking about hours, days per week? At so, moment? four sessions a week, four hours at a time, so 16 hours a week in the gym. Uh, in addition to that, hours stretching mobility each day, so seven hours a week, along with seven hours a week. So I was, I was going to say, what's your recovery process when you're lifting weights like that? I mean, I'm not a top of the stuff. I mean, these are small things like um, physio and sports massage once a week, um, like stretching, ability work, all those together. And at the moment, so you came away from the World Championships with a bronze yeah, so medal in Sweden. So I'm bronze medal in Sweden, so I'm now ranked third in the world, yeah. uh, along with gold in our uh, bench press. So the, the bronze medal, the third world rank, was that a combination of, of lifts? What, yeah, what, what, so what, 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 are the, what are the areas that you work on? So there's obviously bench, which we were talking about. So in competition, you do squat, bench, and deadlift, you do three attempts for each of them, sometimes for five lifts in competition. Yeah. Your highest, uh, so your heaviest weight for all three of those, you can add it together to make a total. Uh, so in the world, I did a 205 kilo squat, uh, 162 and a half kilo bench, and a 255 kilo deadlift, which they got for 622 kilo. 22.5 kilo total, which then ranked in third overall with everyone else's totals. I like the way he's just kind of rattling off these numbers, and I'm kind of thinking about that actual individual weight. And you just go, and it was a six I mean, it is, it's just a phenomenal amount that you're putting your body through, and it'd be absolutely amazing to, to, to be getting those sort of those gains and those achievements. It seems like when you get out of your age class and you start going into the the open, if you like, is that what it's called when you get so past I 18? So, I'm now in sub juniors, which is 18 and under. Yeah. After this, you move into the juniors, which is 24, so it's just 19 to 24. Right. Then after that, you move into OB, which is then 25 to 40. Okay. okay. So, the next so next year is my last year in sub juniors, and then so it goes 24 to 25 year olds. And where are you in terms of like, what you're lifting now? Obviously, you're doing exceptionally well within your age group. Is there a big gap to try and close when you get beyond there is, there is 24? A, there is a gap, yes. Um, but I'd say next year, maybe not an international. Uh, because I'm doing the sort of keep trying to climb to the new world age class and also the world weight class. Uh, but I'd say next year, so the year after next year, 2023, uh, we're about to go to the world. So, what, so, so, the year out. so what's next? Uh, next short term. Short term is European Championships in five weeks. Right. Um, Where is that being held? Uh, Stockholm. At the back of the Stockholm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then hopefully get a um, gold. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Everything goes to plan. I'll win a few of the other competitors. I'll have a few of them in the day. I have all the strong ones to win. Uh, along with getting a gold bench, got the bench, got gold bench again, and also a world record bench. And I suppose for, for lots of you know, students in your position across the country, in all different sports representing the question or the problem or the challenges that they face is how to balance the training that you're doing with your studies. Dare I say, how are you managing all of that? It's not the easiest thing in the world. Yeah. I'll freely admit that it's not the easiest thing in the world. 
Um, you have a strict program, I guess, to follow. Really. The easiest thing is just we know when to prioritise. So when it comes to competition, we do have to prioritise the training and it has to be in school work around the training for the competition. Mm -hmm. If you want to be serious about sure. it, you know that we're saying you're six months out from competition, it's all the way around to see you're training around the school work. So it's, 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 it's managing those cycles. That's what you're using. They should pri prioritise either training or school work whether you're in TK or where you are in the uh, relative to the competition. Is. Sure, sure. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely fascinating because. It's just been so impressive to see your progression because initially for me it was like something you were doing as a part as a kind of pastime to kind of go, you just like lifting weights, you're getting stronger, you're liking your games. You know, I remember you were playing rugby at the time and you were just running through people. And I was like, this is great. And then you're like, actually, I'm not playing rugby anymore. This is what I'm focusing on. And to see you kind of on that journey in such a short space of time has been amazing. So I suppose for us, we're going to be kind of watching you closely. Um, but in terms of short term, very best looking and it's well done.